హలో ఎవరివన్ వెల్కమ్ టు ఆన్లైన్ వీడియో లెక్చర్ సిరీస్ డెవలప్డ్ బై జవహర్లాల్ నెహ్రూ టెక్నాలజికల్ యూనివర్సిటీ కాకినాడ ఇన్ అసోసియేషన్ విత్ ఆంధ్రప్రదేశ్ స్టేట్ కౌన్సిల్ ఆఫ్ హైయర్ ఎడ్యుకేషన్ దిస్ ఈజ్ డాక్టర్ ఎం ప్రేమ్ కుమార్ వర్కింగ్ యాజ్ ప్రొఫెసర్ ఇన్ ద డిపార్ట్మెంట్ ఆఫ్ ఎలక్ట్రానిక్స్ అండ్ కమ్యూనికేషన్ ఇంజనీరింగ్ శ్రీ విష్ణు ఇంజనీరింగ్ కాలేజ్ ఫర్ మెన్ బేమోవర్ వెల్కమ్ టు ద ఆన్లైన్ వీడియో లెక్చర్ సిరీస్ ఇన్ దిస్ లెక్చర్ వి విల్ బి డిస్కసింగ్ అబౌట్ ద శాంప్లింగ్ యా ఇన్ దిస్ లెక్చర్ వి విల్ బి డిస్కసింగ్ అబౌట్ శాంప్లింగ్ one of the important concepts in communication engineering sampling is useful to convert a continuous time signal into discrete time signal to convert a continuous time signal or analog signal into discrete time signal we need to multiply the actual signal with a periodic impulse time let us consider a signal input signal is x of t and this is multiplied by a periodic impulse time this is periodic signal impulse time and the output will be x p of t a discrete signal so let us consider an example and this is a signal x of t this is in continuous nature and considering a periodic impulse time Now, in parallel pulses, this is P of T, this is 0, T, 2, T, 3, T, minus T, minus 2, T, and so on. So, and this is the origin. Okay, 0. now after multiplying this signal with a periodic impulse time we will have this one this is and with this similarly this one this is 0 this is t this is 2t this is 3t minus t minus 2t and this is nothing but x p of t which is nothing but x of t into p of t direct multiplication okay now what is the value here this what is the value here that is x of t is multiplied by delta of t this value is x of t multiplied by delta of t and what about this value now before get to this we will try to uh, give the equation for periodic impulse time so p of t is equal to summation delta t minus n t where n is equal to minus infinity to plus infinity by substituting different values of n n equal to 0 that means delta of t uh, so this is the equation for delta of t n equal to 1 that is t minus capital t so the impulse is shifted to capital t and so on this is the equation for periodic impulse time now this is multiplied by x of t that is x p of t is equal to x of t into p of t this is multiplied by x of t into p of t so this is equal to summation delta of t minus n t n equal to minus infinity to plus infinity into x of t into x of t so once you observe this after multiplying this with a periodic impulse time each pulse values has been changed now this is x of t into delta of t what is this value x of capital t into delta t minus capital t and what is this value is this is x of 2t into delta of t minus 2t similarly what is this value this is x of minus t into delta of 
T plus capital T. Similarly, this is x of minus 2t into delta t plus 2t. So finally what you will get is, so this is nothing but x of and t and delta of t minus and t. So where n is equal to minus infinity to plus infinity. Okay. So this is nothing but whenever you multiply x of t, the delta of t minus t naught, what you will get is x of t naught into delta of t minus t naught. In the same way, okay, x of t is multiplied by delta of t because delta of t existed only at t equal to 0, this becomes x of 0 or, or delta t or you can simply say that x of 0. In the same way, so we know that one property of Fourier transforms is multiplication in one domain is nothing but convolution in another domain. Let me redraw this. So here, one second, let me change the color. This is the X of T. This is X of T, some continuous time signal, and this is T. And if you take the Fourier transform of this, and this is a band limited signal, so that all the frequency components will be 0 to, this is the maximum frequency component, this is omega m. This is X of J omega. So now this is multiplied by periodic impulse time to discretize the continuous time signal. This is P of T. The output will be this will be represented with the dotted line. So this is and this and this and this 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 and this this is x p of t which is nothing but x of t into p of t so this is zero so this is zero and this is zero this is capital t this is 2t, this is 3t, this is minus t, minus 2t, minus 3t. This is t, this is 2t, 3t, minus t, minus 2t, minus 3t. Now Fourier transform of x of t is nothing but x of j omega. Now similarly you have to take the Fourier transform of periodic chemical strain. In four years transform chapter, you might have calculated the uh, Fourier transform of periodic impulse time. So, in Fourier transform of periodic impulse time is again a periodic impulse time in the frequency domain. So, let me take that as a reference. Now, this will be omega s, and this will be minus omega s. Height of the impulse will be 2 pi by capital T. This is 2 omega s. This is, we will see how this omega s is coming into the picture. So, this is P of j omega. Now, here coming to this, whenever we get x p of t by simply multiplying x of t and p of t, the multiplication in time domain should lead to convolution in the frequency domain. Multiplication in M domain leads to convolution in frequency domain. 
So while converting this into frequency domain, we need to convolve x of p power j omega with p of p power j omega. Now let me draw this for different cases. So while converting analog signal into a discrete sequence, we have to multiply the original signal x of t with the periodic impulse time in the time domain. That is converted into frequency domain, the convolution between input spectrum, that is x of j omega and the periodic Kempel's time p of j omega. Now what we have to do is whenever we convolve any function x of t with a periodic impulse time, so it's a simple time period, what you will get is you will end up with the same function. So in the same way we are multiplying with a periodic impulse time by properly choosing uh, frequency sampling, sampling frequency, so we may get like this. This distance we know, this is omega m, this is minus omega m, and this is nothing but omega s, and this is nothing but omega s. Now what about this one? This is nothing but omega s minus omega m, and this is omega s plus omega m, and now this is x p of j omega which is nothing but the convolution between x of j omega into p of j omega. So whenever x of j omega spectrum is there that will appear at each impulse function. Okay. This by observing here from this point to this point omega s is greater than to omega m. So this is omega m and this is omega s minus omega m. Obviously omega s is greater than 2 omega m. Now let us consider a special case. Suppose omega s is equal to twice of omega m. What happens to the spectrum? If the sampling frequency selected such that its value is just twice the maximum frequency component. In that case, if you convert this, we will have this is omega m and this is omega s, this is minus omega m, and this is minus omega s, and this will be omega s plus omega m, and this will be minus omega s minus omega m. Okay, if omega s is equal to twice the maximum frequency components, these two spectrums will touch each other. And suppose if we fail to choose a sampling frequency which is less than twice the maximum frequency component, what happens if we see? This is the original spectrum. Now the FS is less than twice the maximum frequency component. This will be somewhere here. This is omega s and similarly the left hand side this is minus omega s and this value is omega m and this value is omega s minus omega m. So obviously omega s is less than 2 omega m. In this case of omega s is less than 2 omega m we are not able to extract the original signal. So there is a overlap here. So here this is overlap and this overlap continues. So here we will have one more thing and there is a overlap and here there is one more thing and there is a overlap. So this overlap because of this overlap, we will be losing some information. We will be losing some information. 
this condition is called under sample under sample and omega s is equal to omega s uh, condition is called critical sample and omega s is greater than 2 omega n condition is called power sample whenever you want to reconvert back reconstruct back the original signal the shape of the the shape of the input spectrum should not destroy should not change so here in our our sampling condition shape is preserved as the case of critical sampling also shape is preserved only thing is in under sampling condition shape is not preserved because of this overlap of higher and lower frequency components and this effect is called aliasing effect this effect is we call aliasing effect so in under sampling condition we end up with aliasing so now in order to convert back into the original signal we have to extract this same shape of the model, uh, same shape of the message signal by passing through a suitable low pass filter now let me consider another condition critical sampling condition This is omega m. This is omega s. This is minus omega m, and this is zero. Now this is passed through a low pass filter. This cutoff frequency is omega c. See, this is h of j omega, and this is x p of j omega. In this case, omega s. It will be equal to twice the maximum frequency component. If this is the case, after passing through a low pass filter, we may get exact shape, but practically not possible to design an ideal filter. so in practical case there will be a transition there will not be any sudden cut off tra sudden transition so that this condition is also violated so in order to reconstruct the original signal we have to sample the sequence just above the sampling rate next coming to the third case if sampling frequency selected such that it should be less than twice the maximum frequency component and there will be a overlap here now this is passed through a low pass filter and output will be a distorted thing output will be a distorted like so you will find distortion so you will not get this is x p of j omega and this is h of j omega and this is x r of j omega we cannot but reconstruct the original signal in under sampling condition now let me consider the power sampling condition and this is the spectrum before the low pass uh, filter there is a sufficient gap between the spectrum this is omega m this is this is omega s 
this is omega s minus omega m this is omega s plus omega m this is minus omega m and this is minus omega s this is x p r j omega now this spectrum is passed through a filter whose filter characteristics are like this this is h of j omega this is zero you should have cut off frequency so here what should be less than omega s minus omega m and should be less than omega m if we choose a filter with this type of characteristics output we can get back the original signal this is the reconstructed signal once you reconstructed the shape by simply applying the inverse fourier transform we can get back the original signal this is possible only with omega s is greater than our sampling condition sampling condition so this condition and let me give you the mathematical equations for this case so xp of t is equal to x of t into p of t simple multiplication where p of t is equal to periodic kempel stein that is delta of t minus n t where n is equal to minus infinity to plus infinity okay now you multiply this this is x p of t which is equal to summation x of n t to delta of t minus n t n equal to minus infinity to plus infinity so now coming to this multiplication between x of t into p of t in the frequency domain what you will get is x of j omega convolution with p of j omega so this is nothing but x p of j omega and this is nothing but x p of t now coming to this x p of j omega is equal to 1 by 2 pi and this is x of j omega convolution with p of j omega now p of j omega is equal to this is p of j omega is equal to, that is nothing but fourier transform of the periodic kempel stein is again periodic kempel stein with height will be 2 pi by t and the summation will be del of omega minus k omega s where omega s is the sampling frequency this is k is equal to minus infinity to plus infinity now by substituting this equation finally what will get is x p of j omega is equal to 1 by t summation capital x of j omega minus k omega s where k is equal to minus infinity to plus infinity now this is nothing but by keep on adding different sampling values we can get back the original signal so by k is equal to k is equal to 0 in this equation what you will get is x of j omega and k is equal to 1 for k is equal to 1 what you will get is x of j omega minus omega s the spectrum is shifted to omega s for k is equal to minus 1 the spectrum is shifted left towards left by omega s so by providing sufficient gap between these two we are able to retrieve the original signal that is nothing but x passing through a low pass filter whose cut off frequency this is x p of j omega is passed through a low pass filter whose cut off frequency is in between in between omega c is in between omega s minus omega m plus then omega m this is minus so 
provided that at the output side we will be having a reconstructed signal XR of T. So XR of T is you will have this this is XR of 0 omega 0 omega m minus omega m and after applying a not story transfer this we can convert back into time domain signal this is your reconstructed signals. 